Euphonium derives its name from an ancient Greek word euphonos, meaning good sound. So why can you sound so bad on an instrument that literally means good sound? Here are four reasons why. Number one, air. Number two, oral cavity. Three, tension. And four, listening. For number one, air, you're either using too little air and not filling up the entire horn, or air is being forced into the horn or pushed out of you, which creates tension. Tension is the opposite of tone. What I want you to do is to fill up and then let the air out as if it were falling like a weight. There is no tension in your body, and you can see your chest start to compress as you let the air out. Your air should be gently filling your instrument. Number two is oral cavity, which is the shape of the inside of your mouth, and this might mean that your teeth are too close together. So one trick to fix this is to take your pinky and put it in between your teeth, and that is the shape that you should hold while you play. The inside of your mouth, which is the oral cavity, might be a bit too closed, and so one trick you could use is to imagine that you're holding a grape inside of your mouth, or you took a bite of a hot piece of pizza, and you're just holding it inside of your mouth, creating this open resonant chamber for the air to come through and into your instrument. <laughs> Number three is tension. As I said before, tension is the opposite of tone. There might be tension in the lips when you purse your lips to play, but it's your corners that need to be firm, and the lips need to be soft. Too much pressure on the face and on the lips stop the vibration, which creates a beautiful sound. And lots of people I see are pressing their mouthpiece into their face, which creates pressure. One way to resolve this is to hold your mouthpiece in your non-dominant hand with two fingers so that it's only lightly pressing against your face, and anchor on the bottom lip I like to focus a lot on my bottom lip when I play. Tension anywhere on your body can affect the sound that you create, such as tension in the neck or the throat, tension in the shoulders when you take a breath, or maybe if your posture is a little lopsided, it can create a different sound. And even tension in the legs or the back can stop you from creating the most beautiful sound you can. Number four is listening, because you can't just listen to the person next to you in band for an ideal sound. Listen to professionals who have spent decades perfecting their craft and their sound, so that you have an ideal sound in your head, and try to emulate that. My favorite examples of sound production for euphonium players are Thomas Rudy, Demandre Thurman, Mark Jenkins, and Stephen Mead. But there are so, so many great euphonium players out there that you can listen to and pick your favorite. Now that you know why you might have a bad sound, here are some exercises to practice. Here is an exercise called Beautiful Sounds. <laughs> You can also practice etudes from the Roshu book to practice sound production. If you want more videos like this, then hit subscribe. If you want more in-depth information and more personalized advice, then take a lesson from me. Now go off and play beautiful sounds, you beautiful people.